let's talk about fear. The house is empty as I talk to you. A cold October rain is falling outside. <laughs> it's night. Sometimes, when the wind blows the way it's blowing now, we lose the power. But for now, it's on. So let's talk very honestly about fear. Let's talk about moving to the rim of madness and perhaps over the edge. We won't raise our voices and we won't scream. We'll talk rationally, you and I. We'll talk about how sometimes the good fabric of things has a way of unraveling with shocking suddenness. At night, when I go to sleep, I am still at pains to make sure my feet are under the blankets. I'm not a child anymore, but I don't like to sleep with one leg sticking out. Because if a cool hand ever reached out from under the bed and grasped my ankle, I might scream. Yes, I might scream to wake the dead. That sort of thing doesn't happen, of course. We all know that. In the stories you'll see tonight, you'll see all manner of things that go bump in the night, and all sorts of terrors. But none of them is real. The thing under my bed waiting to grab my ankle isn't real. I know that. I also know that if I'm careful to keep my foot under the covers, it will never be able to grab my ankle. <laughs> The officers were satisfied. My manner had convinced them. I was singularly at ease. They sat, and while I answered cheerily, they chatted of familiar things. But ere long I felt myself getting pale and wished them gone. My head ached, and I fancied a dull ringing in my ears. But still they sat and still chatted. <laughs> talked more freely to get rid of the feeling, but the noise continued and gained definitiveness until at length I discovered that the noise was not within my ears. No doubt I now grew very pale, <laughs> but I talked more fluently and with a heightened voice, but the sound increased, and what could I do? It was a low, dull, quick sound much such a sound as a watch makes when enveloped in cotton. I gasped for breath, and yet the officers heard it not. I talked more quickly, more vehemently, but the noise steadily increased. I arose and argued about trifles in a high key and with violent gesticulations, but the noise steadily increased. Why would they not be gone? I paced the floor to and fro with heavy strides, as if excited to fury by the observations of the men, but the noise steadily increased. What could I do? I foamed, I raved, I swore. I swung the chair upon which I had been sitting and grated it across the board, but the noise arose over all and continually increased. It grew louder, 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 and still the men sat pleasantly and smiled. Was it possible they heard not? Almighty God, no! No! They heard. They suspected. They knew! They were making a mockery of my horror. This I thought and this I think. But anything was more tolerable than this derision. Anything was more bearable than this agony. I felt that I must scream or die. And now again, hark! Louder! 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 Villains dissemble no more! I admit the deed! Resolved upon the deed. Come, you spirits that tend on mortal thoughts, unsex me here and fill me from the crown to the toe, top full of direst cruelty. At once will I slay my children and then leave this land. 
Make thick my blood. Stop up the access and passage to remorse. I will not delay long enough to hand them over to some more savage hand butcher. Yet do I fear thy nature. It is too full of the milk of human kindness to catch the nearest way. Needs must they die in any case. And since they must, I will slay them. I, the mother that bore them. I have given suck and know how tender it is to love the babe that milks me. Give not one thought to thy babes. How dear they are, or how thou art their mother. Be not lost so poorly in your thoughts. O heart of mine, still thyself. Look not so pale. Why do I hesitate to do the awful deed that must be done? A little water clears us of this deed. How easy is it then? Come, take the sword, thou wretched hand of mine. Come, thick night, and pall thee in the dunnest smoke of hell, that my keen knife see not the wound it makes. Take it, and advance to that post whence starts thy life of sorrow. Infirm purpose. Give me the dagger. Away with cowardice. The attempt and not the deed. Found this one brief day. Forget thy children, dear. And after that, lament. Your constancy has left you unattended. For though thou wilt slay them, yet they were thy darling still. These deeds must not be thought of after these ways. So it will make us mad. And I am a lady of sorrows. What's done cannot be undone. This cannot be allowed to happen! Good God, look at him, barely breathing, barely able to speak. If you're going to do something like this, then you have to make sure he can't tell anyone. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.